Shlomik Rezny, Sammy, was born in 1935 in Deblin, a small town in central Poland, roughly 57 miles from Warsaw. Sammy was just four years old when World War II began with the Wehrmacht's attack on Poland on September the 1st of 1939. On September the 2nd at 11 a.m. in the morning, Deblin was bombed because despite the town's relatively small size, it had the largest airport in Poland and was the center for training of Polish fighter pilots. Now, both within Germany and in the countries that the Nazis occupied, the persecution of the Jews, Sinti and Roma, commonly called gypsies, political opponents, the disabled, homosexuals, and others radically intensified. From the very first weeks of the invasion of Poland, the Nazi military and police units shot thousands of people. In Deblin, Nazis imprisoned Jews in the town's only synagogue where they were burnt alive. Eventually, all of the Jewish population was imprisoned in the ghetto of Deblin. The conditions in the ghetto were deplorable. Many were forced into hard labor, and there were those who literally worked until they died. They would then be replaced by more slave labor. The deprivations and acts of immense cruelty were endless. The circumstances Shlamik Resnik, Sami, endured at such a young age are beyond our comprehension. Sammy, today known as Sam Harris, is one of the youngest Holocaust survivors. His story of survival is compelling and important and one that needs to be told. Writer-artist Ella Palestrant interviewed Sam Harris over a two-hour period on March the 18th of 2013. I have read your book, Sammy, Child Survivor of the Holocaust, and I was enormously moved by it. And I still see you as that little boy that grew up in Devlin. And um, I'm interested in your earliest memories of growing up there. I know you had a large extended family, your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, and you were absolutely enveloped in their love until things changed. So what are your very earliest memories and all your memories? I go back to two very, very early ones. One, when I was being taught how to read the alphabet. I remember my father sitting down and I was sitting on his lap. Behind us was a rabbi and I was learning Kometz Aleph O, which means A, B, C in Hebrew. And while I was learning this, candy came down over my head mm. and I only learned not long ago, that that was the Jewish custom to introduce you to learning, that learning is sweet. But I remember all the weekends, every weekend. And we, have, we have to remember that I was the youngest of seven children. And so I was treated very well by everyone. And, uh, you know, we played outside. But most important, on the weekends, we would go to my grandparents' home in a little, uh, a little farm area. Uh, it's called the Little Dorf. And uh, we would go by horse and buggy. Yeah, I don't know how many miles it was. And we would go there, and it was beautiful. It had a little pond. My, li my sister Sarah, who was about a year and a half, two years older than I, we would go together. We would play with the kachkis. The kachki is a duck. It's a Yiddish word, kachki. And my grandpa always had a, a little pony there for us. And, and, and I remember the barn. And when it rained, I would go inside and sit, uh, lay in, in the straw. And it smelled so good. And I could hear the rain coming down. Uh, but most of all, being Friday, my grandma was a little short woman. And she had a little white like babushka on her head and she was baking bread and she had this they had this stove a long stove and they had a long wooden spatula I remember she would be reaching in and pulling out the challah for Friday and it smelled so good and I couldn't wait to taste it um, just uh, those are 
some of the things that I remember. Oh, I remember uh, my father at home. Um, I think I was his favorite. Uh, <laughs> I was the youngest. Anyway, uh, on the Sabbath, we would go for a walk. And he was very proud. I remember he, he was walking with the hands behind his back, and we were just kind of walking along. And uh, I must have been very close to my father because I remember going to the temple with him, the shul. And um, when we were there, he had a big talus, white talus. I remember hiding underneath it. I also remember going to a mikvah, ritual bath. See, my father was a soifer. A soifer is a person who writes the Torah. So he had to, as a, uh, 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 he had to go to the ritual bath a lot because it's pretty sacred to write the Torah. And I remember he was sitting by the window. He had a he had a, a, a white uh, quill mm -hmm. pen, and he used to sharpen it, make sure it was right, and then he would dip it in black ink and go through letter by letter. It had to be perfect. Those are some of the big, big things that I remember. And you had a river close by, the Vistula River, and you played with your siblings in the river. Do you want to tell us about that? Hey, the Vistula River is a, is, a, is a major river in Poland, and it was going right uh, through our town. Sometimes it would flood, and, and I remember, you know, we would have our pants roll them up and then start splashing in it and running in it and, and learn to swim and uh, just having fun. So your life was really happy? Oh my gosh, it couldn't be better, it couldn't be better. I was a little child, I didn't know any better. Everything was beautiful, life was beautiful when I was a child. So now let us get to the war, 1939. Everything changed. Mm -hmm. The world changed. Yes. Europe changed. Mm -hmm. Even though it had been changing all along, this was a very dramatic. What are your first memories of, of the time when war came to Devlin? Very dramatic. We were, I believe, having lunch, sitting inside, big family. Heard noises outside. We ran outside. In there were air airplanes chasing each other, shooting at each other, and you would see airplanes burning and falling down. My town of Demblin uh, had airfields, and the Polish Air Force was getting, was getting its training there. They had, I don't know how many airplanes, I didn't know anything about it, but the Nazis decided to attack the airfields. So there was a lot of fighting going on. No jets yet in those days. And it didn't take him more than a day or two to knock out all the Polish airplanes. And I remember that very clearly. It's something that, you know, you just can't erase from your mind. Because the next part got worse. Those same airplanes, they were shooting down, uh, came down after the people. I remember all of us in town running, running, running on the field. The Nazi planes came down at the people and shooting with their guns. And, and, and that's the first time I really witnessed uh, death and 